We are joined here today by the Vice President of the European Investment Bank who is on a visit in Uzbekistan at the invitation of the government to sign a Memorandum of Understanding on the RLC rehabilitation issue. Good morning, sir. and Good morning. Welcome, welcome to Uzbekistan. Thank you. Uh, you have a quite bright career, quite colorful. You have studied at Harvard Business School and then at uh, Moscow State Institute of International Relations. You worked at JP Morgan and more recently served as the Minister of Economy of the Slovak Republic. So looking back to the past, what do you think is your greatest achievement and what was your biggest failure? <laughs> Those are tough questions because uh, as you mentioned I have gone through uh, different uh, iterations in my career. Uh, actually I started in the uh, President Administration in Czechoslovakia in 1990, uh, working with uh, President Havel quite closely in the, in the International Department. And then I worked uh, for the international think tank called ISVAS Institute. And after that I went to commercial banking and then to government and now in the European Western Bank. Uh, very difficult to say what are the uh, biggest achievements. Um, for me, always the main achievement is to get to know interesting people because uh, when you change institutions and I think today's uh, world uh, uh, this is part of life that you, uh, people will be changing institutions and uh, even types of professions and careers quite quite a lot uh, but what continues are people that you get to know and who stay your friends uh, during your career and uh, from this point of view I, I'm, I'm very happy that during this time I was able to meet, uh, uh, meet uh, different people and uh, also be able to uh, come and work in countries like Uzbekistan, which I enjoy very much. If you could change something in your past career, what would you change? <laughs> Difficult to say, you know. It's uh, it's easy maybe when you look back. Uh, difficult when you are in this process. Um, I would I would probably um, um, try to do even more <laughs> in the in the sense of uh, um, exploring more opportunities. Uh, maybe try to do uh, more work which would bring me to to the parts of the world where I didn't didn't work, like Africa or uh, Latin America. And, uh, so uh, I think. Um, I like international, I like global issues and uh, I think what is also very important is to get engaged in projects where you see the outcome, where there is something tangible that uh, you can point that uh, this was the result of my, of my efforts. So maybe make uh, the work more project related, more tangible and uh, even more international. It is known that the European Investment Bank is the biggest multilateral financial institution in the world. Uh, what are the priority objectives of the bank within and outside the European Union area? Yeah, it is, uh, as you said, it is the largest international financial institution. Our lending volumes annually are around 70, 75 billion euro. Um, they kind of uh, change depending on the economic needs. The bank uh, uh, is, uh, for us, it's very important to have so-called additionality. It means uh, we fill the market gaps in the economy. So actually, uh, unlike commercial banks, we are more active and we lend and do more when the situ situ economic situation is bad. Because then you have market gaps which are not filled by commercial banks, by the market economy and uh, market institutions. Uh, so uh, uh, with this level of financing of around 70 to 75 billion, uh, we are, for example, eight times bigger than EBRD. Um, we are bigger than the World Bank, which uh, does around 60, 65 billion. So it's quite a large institution. We are owned by 28 member states of the European Union. And the EIB was created in 1958 as the bank for, the, for Europe uh, to help with economic development of, uh, of uh, European countries. Uh, but gradually uh, we expanded our activities also outside of the European Union. Uh, so today around 10% of our activities, uh, meaning close to 8 billion euro, is uh, outside of the European Union. And this is basically the, the, the structure of the bank. We are 
headquarters in Luxembourg, uh, have around 3,000 employees and uh, we have representations in different countries of the world. Uh, I've learned that the European Investment Bank has branch offices in 14 cities around the world. Uh, is there any possibility for the bank to consider the issue of establishing a branch in one of the cities of Central Asia, for example in Tashkent? And in general, what factors are taken into consideration when choosing a site for a branch? We are, uh, I would say, a very cost-conscious uh, institution. Uh, try to be lean and mean, <laughs> meaning uh, uh, not to have too much uh, bureaucracy, administration, uh, people, but focus on, uh, on, on projects and on financing. So uh, uh, we have uh, uh, representations not in every country of the world, uh, really just relatively few around the world, as you, as you mentioned. Um, and that's why in Central Asia, which uh, is relatively new region for the European Western Bank, uh, we are now in the process of thinking about opening a regional representation for, for the countries and certainly uh, Uzbekistan, Tashkent, uh, because of the size of the country, importance, but also dynamic ch changes, also central geographically. Uh, so it is certainly uh, one of the main considerations for possible branch. Uh, but I don't want to <laughs> say whether this will be the result or not. We'll see how the leadership, leadership of the bank, bank how we decide this. What is the current level of cooperation between the European Investment Bank and Uzbekistan? And how would you assess uh, the prospects for its first development? Yeah, uh, we started relatively recently or late, let's say, uh, because uh, the agreement between the European Western Bank and uh, the government of Uzbekistan was signed in February 2018. So de facto it's only uh, one and a half year uh, since today. Uh, but during this short time we developed quite, uh, I would say, quite active agenda of projects. So we have already signed uh, 200 million euro of uh, projects and financing for, for the country. And uh, we have a pipeline of uh, ad additional uh, four, 400 million euro uh, for additional projects. So the work is developing, uh, I would say, very quickly and we see uh, many opportunities in, Uz in Uzbekistan uh, because of, the, of its dynamic change and dynamic development. Uh, you headed the delegation of the European Investment Bank last year in November and attended International Investment Forum in Tashkent on tourism. What are the outcomes of the forum? Well, certainly Uzbekistan is the country which has uh, beautiful nature, many opportunities for tourism development. Uh, we look at tourism as uh, uh, one segment of economic uh, activity uh, and our role is mostly to support uh, sustainable economic development in general. So uh, obviously for tourism development you need uh, uh, many services which would help uh, to bring and make uh, Uzbekistan also attractive country for people to come here. Now this includes uh, municipal services, uh, making sure that uh, uh, that uh, services in, uh, uh, in, in the country are uh, in good shape. It includes also water management, in, includes sanitation, um, includes um, um, uh, waste management and so, and so on. So these are all issues which create attractiveness of the country. And uh, that's why our main focus so far has been on, uh, on uh, structural changes in the country by, for example, improving the energy efficiency of uh, of buildings, of enterprises, um, also helping to develop uh, uh, alternative energy sources uh, to uh, make uh, clean energy in uh, Uzbekistan, but also on water management, bringing the drinking water to the population of, of, of Uzbekistan where it is not available, and uh, also different type of sanitization projects. How do you think the country has changed since you knew it before? And now? Yeah, I came, uh, I think I came first to Uzbekistan sometime in uh, late 1990s uh, uh, when I was uh, working for, uh, uh, for commercial banks. And um, uh, at that time it was very much a closed country without much cooperation with outside world. Uh, it was not easy to come to <laughs> Uzbekistan yeah, and Tashkent and get the visa and so on. Uh, so I remember that uh, at that time uh, it was uh, uh, kind of 
typical uh, Soviet country, Soviet, uh, uh, Soviet city, uh, without international uh, chains and uh, international trademarks, uh, shopping malls and so on. Today, of course, you see something very different. Uh, you see a very open country, a uh, country which is uh, more and more uh, incorporated, integrated in global economy. Uh, when you go to Tashkent, uh, it's, it's almost the same as if you were uh, somewhere in Berlin or Paris or any any other Western country and city. So uh, um, I think the uh, the country Uzbekistan has really developed very rapidly during the last 15-20 uh, years, at least uh, what I have seen myself. What do you think? Many international investors before coming to Uzbekistan, they double think. Right. What is the triple, primary triple, thing. triple thing. <laughs> What do you think are the primary causes of this? Why they are afraid to invest in Uzbekistan? What are the main factors, in your opinion? Well, the the changes, the radical changes in the country happened uh, relatively recently. I mean, we are basically years. talking about maybe three years. Yes. So uh, I think there are some investors uh, who are still. I'm um, uncertain whether these changes are uh, long term, whether they are sustainable and whether the reforms which were introduced will continue or whether there will be some backlash because uh, it does happen that uh, when uh, people are facing these uh, uh, dramatic changes and uh, with also moving towards more uh, market economy that, uh, uh, that there are kind of backlashes and reverse uh, reverse process. Also, uh, of course, there are questions about, uh, about the overall development in this region. Um, we know that uh, this is the area which is um, heavily influenced by growing China. Um, Russia obviously has its own interests, uh, countries like Turkey and and, and, uh, and Iran, China, obviously, uh, they all have their own interests. So I think that uh, uh, investors, uh, they want to see that uh, the process of reforms is uh, really long-term and sustainable. And they want to see uh, what is the strategy of the country in this very dynamic and uh, uh, very complex uh, region of Central Asia. You are signing a memorandum of understanding with Uzbekistan on the RLC rehabilitation issue. What are the forcing causes to sign this particular memorandum of understanding? Yeah, this is correct. I will sign today with the uh, Minister for uh, Investments and Foreign Trade uh, this memorandum of understanding. Uh, this is the basis upon which uh, we plan to provide over 100 million euro for the rehabilitation of the RLC area. Um, RLC is uh, not only, I would say, Uzbek uh, issue, but it is a global issue, a global problem. We, you know that uh, these days there is a um, climate conference, climate summit in New York uh, as part of the General Assembly of the United Nations. And um, uh, our bank, the European Western Bank, is uh, declaring some very important new targets. Uh, for example, the fact that uh, by 2025, we want 50% uh, of all our lending, so close to 40 billion euro per year, uh, to be for environmental projects. And uh, we have an ambition to become a climate bank of the European Union. Uh, so climate and climate-related uh, issues and projects are very important for us. And when it, when it comes to the RLC, uh, we want to uh, support uh, different measures which will be focused on uh, desalinization, uh, because this is obviously one of the key problems and also to improve the irrigation system in the in the area uh, to allow water to flow into the into the lake and to make it a lively area what recommendations would you give to uzbekistan to improve its investment attractiveness i think um, many things are, are happening and as i mentioned uh, we see a huge improvement in the overall economic uh, situation in the in the way how how the government behaves towards foreign investors i think it is very important that uh, uh, there is uh, what investors want is uh, predictability uh, they want to know that uh, there is uh, stability and uh, predictability in terms of the economic environment uh, they want to make sure that uh, there is uh, sufficient support for the protection of uh, investors rights and private property 
um, for protection of in investments. And uh, of course, it's very important that um, uh, decision making uh, is uh, relatively fast, that you don't have to spend too much time with bureaucracy, with the um, kind of governmental bu bureaucracy and administration, uh, but that there is a very I would say flexible and quick response to, to investors and, and, and the welcoming approach. Uh, what are the future projects, plans between the bank and Uzbekistan? Yeah, we are looking at uh, different projects. Um, uh, they are mostly linked to uh, improving or having positive impact on the environment. Uh, so, for example, we are looking at projects related to waste management, uh, because especially municipal waste management is a big issue. For example, in Tashkent, where, uh, which produces uh, annually more than 500,000 tons of waste, uh, which is uh, just uh, put on Svalky. <laughs> Yes. Uh, into the open, uh, op op open ground. Uh, this is not a long way to go, and this is a big, big issue, environmental issue. So we want to find and work with the uh, with uh, government, local government of uh, Tashkent, but also uh, with the government of Uzbekistan, of trying to to deal with this issue. We are also uh, finalizing project on energy efficiency. Uh, so basically, how to decrease the energy consumption in. Uh, in key corporations and uh, enterprises of, uh, of Uzbekistan, uh, but also such projects as uh, uh, development and um, also modernization of hydropower plants in, in uh, Uzbekistan as, as a way to contribute to clean, clean energy production. We do hope that these projects will work for the benefit of both Uzbekistan and the European Investment Bank in the future. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. I thank you very much for your time, sir. Thank you. Have a good day. Thank you.